Hello, Brobs. We're back with more new book arrivals. This is number 189. These are from a library book sale. $5 for Trader Joe size paper bag of books. Already did the first one, which I think I had 24. How many are in there? Three, six, nine, ten, three. Six, nine, eleven. So what's that? Twenty-one. So forty-five books for ten bucks. Basically, what's that? Forty-five cents a piece. Yeah, right. I think maybe I'm wrong. You figured ten bucks, nine. Is it forty-five cents? Doesn't sound as good. No, because 20 for 5 bucks would be 25 cents. Is that right? I don't know. Anyway. Maybe it is. That's 25 cents, right? What's it matter? As I've stated, I like these Dover Thrift Editions. And I may have bought one of these last week. <laughs> now I have two Eddie Poe's. The Raven and Other Poems. Ellery Queen's Cat of Many Tales. Not a mystery reader. In fact, I don't like fiction much at all. But when you got a cat involved, there we go, bruv. He's right on the cover. Ellery Queen obviously was a nom de plume of two writers. Thackeray, The Life of a Literary Man. I don't know why there were so many copies of... Uh, Thackeray's Vanity Fair at this sale, but apparently people read it and got rid of it. And this book actually has some value, about a $10 book, $10 plus dollar book, which is shocking to me because I figured no one even knew who Thackeray was. Not saying that I'm some knowledgeable erudite literati, but there you go. Langston Hughes, The Dream Keeper, and other poems. My only interest in Mrs. Schnell's classroom in Langston Hughes is that he was a friend of Robinson Jeffers' wife, Una Jeffers, so he gets collected. The Dream Keeper and other poems by illustrated by Brian Pinky. I don't know if this is including seven additional poems. When was it originally published? Does it say? 67 maybe? I don't know. It might just be a compilation. I'm not a fan of Allen Ginsberg, but picked up his journals from January to May 1965 former library book. I think Ginsburg's star has, post-death star has really fallen. And rightfully so, because he was a poetister of the lowest order. And, I mean, his howl was a joke. If you ever see him reading it, you can see even he was laughing at it. It's basically just a way to grab attention. But, Miguel Grinberg, poet and editor of Echo Contempor Contemporaneo with Ginsburg in Havana, January 1965. He's not aware that he went there, but didn't really care either. I know he went to Malaysia and had sex with eight-year-old children, so, I mean, that should get him. Maybe that's what got him canceled, honestly. And he was a member of NAMBLA. I mean, if that isn't enough to convince you that he was a piece of garbage. Not a monument to be proud of, Vladimir. You should have sent a letter to England denouncing Stalin. My pen now dry. They will laugh at my bitter words, says Google on his grave. A Study of Scarlet's, Scarlet O'Hara and Her Literary Dotes. 
This is a very interesting sounding book. Unfortunately, it's X Library, but I don't care. There are two portrayals of Scarlett O'Hara, the widely familiar one of the film Gone with the Wind and Margaret Mitchell's more sympathetic character in the book. In a study of Scarlett's, Margaret D. Bauer examines these two characterizations, noting that although Scarlett O'Hara is just 16 at the start of the novel, she is criticized for behavior that would have been excused if she were a man. In the end, despite losing nearly every person she loves, Scarlett remains stalwart enough to face another day. For this reason and so many others, Scarlett is an icon, an American popular culture, and an inspiration to female readers. And yet she is more often than not condemned for being a sociopathic shrew by those who do not take the time to get to know her through the novel. After providing a more sympathetic reading of Scarlett as a young woman who refuses to accept social limitations based on gender and seeks to be loved for who she is, Bauer examines Scarlett-like characters in other novels. Interesting, bro. I actually have two copies of Gone with the Wind. I think one is a first edition. Well, maybe not like a first first, but an earlier edition. So I figured I'd add that to my collection that I'll never read. Sylvia Brown, shyster, deceased shyster, insight, case files from the psychic world. Dear Sylvia, I just wanted to thank you for helping me resolve a 26-year heartache. During my time with you, my sister Linda communicated from the other end. I had nothing to say to you during my life, but I'm going to contact you when I'm dead. Glory to God in the highest. What did that say? Low lives? Hey, you low life. Primary reasons why so many of these low life thieves get away with their crimes and avoid prosecution. They're very skilled at leaving town and disappearing as soon as they sense the threat of exposure. Wow. That's that's a remarkable trait not to be caught. Annie's Ghost by Steve Luxenberg. A journey into a family secret. I have about seventeen copies of this book because it's local and Pertains to the Eloise Asylum, which I think during the time this woman might have been there, it might have been the Wayne County General Hospital psychiatric ward, but I don't know what her time period was. Oh, is it signed too? Well, there you go. I didn't even notice it was signed. Well, to Heather Hyatt with best wishes, November 10th, 2009, Steve Luxembourg. Well, that's nice. I got a signed copy. I actually looked to see if it was signed and I saw nothing. I was just like, I'll get it anyway. So yeah, he had an aunt who he didn't know about. And she was put into an asylum for some unknown reason. I think she may have had some, yeah, she had disabilities. Mentally ill, the question, I think she may have had both. But yeah. The Side of Paradise and Tender as the Night by F. Scott Fitzgerald, Scribner, hardcover editions, nothing extraordinarily valuable, but for whatever I paid for them, 25, 30 cents, well worth it. Nineteen twenty, nineteen forty-eight. I have not read any F. Scott Fitzgerald. I must admit, Hemingway's feuds with him. Well, they were friends, and I, Hem, Hemingway often disparaged him, and so I kind of just took on that disparagement. Plus, I'm not a big fan of fiction. I would say I liked half of Hemingway's works, and usually the ones I liked were ones that were critically disdained. But, yeah, I mean, the bullfighting stuff that's and the war one's absolutely boring to me. 
This Side of Innocence by Taylor Caldwell, a book I would not have gotten if it didn't have this. This book is my friend, and I like to keep my friend. I don't know who crossed out the name, but reject that notion of crossing out the name. What does it say? I like to keep my friend. Okay, that's a weird... 1946. I believe this is a nothing romance, but it's got a pretty cool end papers. I really wish the name wasn't crossed out. I probably could see it through here. What's it say? You can see it. Eckhart? May say Eckhart Fred. No. Giselle. WP. Can't read it. I can't read it. But that's the reason why I got that one. These next two kind of go together. I don't think they're written by the same author. Ben Tarnoff, The Bohemians, Mark Twain, and the San Francisco writers who reinvented American literature. Who exactly are these writers? Bret Hart. Struggling gay poet Charles Warren Stoddard and beautiful haunted Ina Coolberth, Coolberth, poet and protector of the group. Twain joins their ranks and the experience that follow put him on the path to greatness. I know he is from San Francisco. Pretty soon he's drunk on champagne oysters in the city's intoxicating energy. 27 years old, fleeing the Civil War and seeking adventure, Twain finds a global seaport flush with new money and peopled by fortune seekers from five continents. Looks interesting. Dickens' fur coat and Charlotte's unanswered letters. The rose and romances of England's great Victorian novelist, what Jane Austen ate and author of what Jane Austen ate and Charles Dickens knew. First edition, not that it's a valuable book or anything, 1997, to Beak and Elizabeth, the Rose and Romances. Yeah, interesting. I like these sort of books. You don't have to, bruv. It's not your prerogative. W, Somerset Mom, Ashenden, Vintage Mom. Hope that's not Walter. Standing though it looks like it is, it is, it is, bro. Sons of bitches. Whatever. Yeah, it is totally. You can see it. That's the thing. Most of these books I didn't even leaf through, and I could have grabbed two or three more bags, but it just seemed like overkill at that point. Plus, I had to go to work. Daphne du Maurier's Frenchman's Creek. I don't believe I have this book. One of the several of her oeuvre that I don't have. Frenchman's Creek. Here was this one written, 42. I've seen, I looked it up on eBay, and I've seen the dust jacket from that era, and it was not a pretty one, but I still would have preferred to see it. There was a copy of Rebecca there. Or was it my cousin, Rachel? And then with a raggedy ass jacket, dust jacket that I saw on the first day of the sale, which was what? Thursday, Friday, Saturday, four day sale, but I didn't grab it and it wasn't there yesterday. So, oh, well, I missed out. I don't believe I have happy Christmas or come wind, come weather. Gerald doesn't sound familiar. The progress of Julius. I'll never be long. Yeah, I, there's a bunch of her books I don't have. I keep finding the same ones. This one I've never seen. The Prince and the Little Lily. The story of Lily Langtree, the greatest international beauty of her day. She does look pretty comely, as we say. Spanning three continents and two eras, here is the story of the love affair between the playboy Prince of Wales, Edward VII, and Lily Langtree, the greatest international beauty of her day. Together, they set a new standard of splendor and sensuality for an entire era, the golden 
Edwardian age. Let's go in my shelves, my pallet wood shelves of English history that I'll never read about. Providence of wit, aspects of form in Augustan literature and the arts. This one was a no-brainer to pick up. 1989. Let's see who's included in here. The preface. I don't even think there is a... I don't want to wreck the covers. I think there is an index. Contents. Harmony. Pope. Gay. Fielding. Goldsmith. Swift. I guess I could have just leafed through and seen that. Helen Back, Reflections on Writers and Writing from Dante to Rushdie, Tim Parks. Parks is among the rare authors. Shut up. In this brilliant collection of essays, Tim Parks, a celebrated novelist and master of the essay form, offers a wide range of wonderfully... Challenging and always provocative reflections on literature and the art of writing. Parks turns his attention to classic authors such as Dante, Leopardi, Borges, Beckett, and Christina Steed, as well as contemporary writers including the late W.G. Seabold, Vikram, Seth, Jose, Saramago, and Salman Rushdie, most of whom I've never heard of. Fifteen were sufficient. I've never heard of Tim either, so... What's that tell you about me or Tim? Sold books for many years. I don't believe I've ever seen a book by Tim Parks. The Cardinal's Snuffbox by Henry Harlan. Old classic book, and I believe this is from Manistee, Michigan, the book. I mean, who puts this on there? Does that say the A. H. Lyman Company? Pharmacist, Manistee, Manistee, Michigan. Don't understand that little. Why they made them so small. But they did. I think this is 1919. Sixth edition, 1900. I thought it said 1919 somewhere on there. Maybe I'm imagining other books. Sixth edition. I guess it didn't say 1919. It said nothing, nothing. A lot of these books go to their special room and they sit there for years with like prices of four or five, six bucks and then they never sell. So they bring them out to the general population. And I could have picked up a bunch for a buck, but I'm just like, I don't need any more books for the hell of it. The Matrix of Modernism. Pound Elliot and early 20th century thought. This was intermixed with the general fiction, which is not that anyone else was going to pick it up, but I got it. Pound Elliot and early 20th century thought. Sanford Schwartz. As I said, I will pick up most explication. It is X Library, so that's disappointing, but as I've said, these. This book sale has now, I mean, they weed out all their books, scholarship books for this manga and other bullshit. But I guess you got to give people what they want to read or what's the point of a library. And it kind of begs the question, what is the point of the library at this point? What year is this? 80s? It's probably never been checked out one time. I'm sure that's how they decide to withdraw these books. 1985, probably been read twice. Might even have a card now. Anyway, 25 cent book. Ex Libris. Lastly, Dorothy Eden, the Storington Papers. Just one of those gothic novels. From the 60s, 70s. I have several of her books. This is a nice copy. I don't know why I don't pick up the Victoria, Victoria Holt, but they just seem 
like the lowest common denominator. At least Dorothy Eden didn't write 700 books of pap. She only wrote probably 50. Anyway, that's all. Goodbye, bros. Goodbye. And I get 45 bucks for 10 bucks. I don't know how I keep thinking that's 45 cents a piece. So 10 divided by 45 would be 4.5 divided by $1 is what? 20 cents? 21 cents? 22 cents? Yeah, I think it's more in line of 22 cents, not 45. All right, Rob's goodbye. Goodbye.